we're not talking about just receiving things. I believe, forgive me, I know people have done this ugly with this. I do believe God wants us to be blessed financially. I'm sorry. I know that's a touchy subject, um, but I do believe that. I do believe God wants us to have enough to pay our bills and enough to give to somebody else. I do believe that. I believe God wants us to have a nice house to live in. I believe that. It doesn't have to be a mansion, but something ain't falling apart, caving. I do believe that. I absolutely believe God wants us to be able to buy our children Christmas presents. I believe that. I don't believe we need to send our kids off to school wearing rags and holes in them. <laughs> Na- nowadays, let me start, start. Nowadays, them clothes with holes in them probably cost more than the clothes without them. But I do. I believe God wants us to be blessed and I th- we've said it a million times. I think it's okay for us to have stuff as long as stuff don't have us. Y'all heard that in church before? Dr. Rutland was talking about slavery one day, and it kind of lit into me. Um, and I thought, that's so good. We're talking about finances. If, if Mike is my slave. Come on, Mike, get excited about this. <laughs> Mike is my slave. I am his owner. I'm his master. Which one of us, if we wanted to, could give away the other one? Could he give away the master? No, but the master could give him away. And it hit me and I thought, oh my goodness. That truck, that money, that check, if it ever gets to a place where I can't give it away, then something happens and roles have been reversed and now all of a sudden... I'm its slave instead of it being mine. But when God blesses me, as long as I'm in a position to say, Lord, I'll give it all away. Father, if that's what you tell me to do, that tithe, I can give it away. The moment I say, I can't tithe, I can't give an offering, now something's happened. Now I've become the slave and the money has become my master. But if I can give it away, now that shows something. That shows that I'm, and it's not just about stuff, but I will say, Uh, Even though Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, Jesus also said, freely you have received, freely give. Not talking about just money, but there is something to that too. But we're talking about tonight, James is going to hit us with wisdom. What about hope? What about peace? What about joy? What about salvation? We need to learn how to receive salvation. Y'all remember the disciples Peter and John walking through the gate called Beautiful? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Well, they didn't steal it. They got it somehow. They learned to receive. And if we're not learning to receive, then it's going to be real hard for us. Y'all, if I'm standing up here, there is nothing like an angry pastor preaching about joy. Y'all seen that? God wants you to have joy, you idiot. I'm telling you what's wrong with you people. Something ain't right about that. Something's not right. Now, every single one of us can be accused of hypocrisy in some shape, form, or fashion. But there needs to be something I've received in order for me to be able to give it. So when we're talking about receiving, I know the title might kind of cringe for a second. But but it's not just about stuff. It's learning how to receive the Holy Spirit. Learning how to receive the power of God. And again, tonight, James says, and learning how to receive wisdom. But now, as we read, you'll see that... Here are some of the keys in receiving wisdom are the exact same keys that we're going to need to receive anything. Everybody say anything. Anything. You ready? All right, verse 5. If any man of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. What I'm going to do tonight, if y'all get bored, forgive me. I'm just going to go through this thing line upon line, uh, word for word. You want to just grab a pencil and maybe you can jot some of these things down. It is Bible study, so forgive me. Let's start with the first word. If, if, daddy always taught me growing up that that word if means on the condition that. If. How many of you heard pastors talk about fasting? Doesn't happen a lot in South Georgia. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you, Bishop. You know what church you at? I'm just teasing. I'm really not talking to anybody, but I'm, I'm imagining some uh, 
What's a nice way to put it, uh, Pastor? She said obese. That is not nice, <laughs> Dr. Bowles. Uh, rotund, that's nice. We don't talk about fasting so much in the church of God no more. We got delivered from that. Um, it, it, but if, if you hear a pastor talking about Jesus and fasting, how many have ever heard him say, uh, Jesus said, when you fast? You heard that? When you fast. And what does the preacher say right after that? Y'all help me. Y'all grew up in church. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He didn't say if. Now, y'all notice right there, church. He didn't say if you fast. <laughs> He said, when you fast. Y'all heard that? Anybody heard that? Raise your hand, Sammy. You heard that before? Come on now. All right. Raise your knee, Sammy. Listen, listen. We've all heard that before. Or most of us have heard that before. Jesus didn't say, uh, if you fast. He said, when you fast. What's the point that the preacher's trying to make? Jesus' assumption is, you're going to fast. If you're a Christian, you will fast. It ain't going to be maybe if. But notice James uses the word if. He doesn't say when. What are you saying? I think too often I walk through life just assuming that I'm going to be some dummy who doesn't know what to do. I'm going to live. James makes the assumption that not knowing what to do is going to be a rare occasion versus then the Christian who gets up every morning totally lost. I don't know what to do. I'm just... God never intended for His children to go through life grasping at straws and desperate, and I can't figure this out, and I don't know what to do. We have a good daddy God who says, I want you to know what to do. I want you to know where to go. I want you to know what decision to make. So James uses the word if. He doesn't say when. He says if. If any of you lack wisdom. In other words, the majority of our lives, we should get up, those of us who know Jesus, who were filled with the Holy Spirit, we should get up and say, I have the greater one on the inside of me. I know him by name. He knows me. He has, he has my life in the palm of his hand. I have wisdom beyond oh, my own understanding. That should be the attitude. Versus most of the time, we're real sheepish going, I just don't know how I'm going to make. That shouldn't be the case. It should be the opposite. Where there might be, come on somebody say might be, there might be some morning where we get up and we need special revelation and special wisdom and special counsel. He starts with the word if, if any. Everybody say any. That right there makes me happy because immediately we're not talking about preachers. We're not talking about pastors or evangelists. We're not talking about the women of God who's memorized the scripture, who's prayed five or ten hours a day. He says any. The book of James is preaching and writing to, James is writing to uh, Jewish Christians. These were Jews who believed that Jesus was the Messiah and got saved. Two or three verses earlier, I'm not sure exactly where it is. He even says brethren, brethren, anybody who's a Christian, this Anybody a Christian, please raise your hand. Please raise. Come on, give God glaze right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hand. Yeah, look around you. If, if you are a believer in Jesus, you qualify. Any, if anybody lacks wisdom. If anybody. All right, now we get to the word lack. Told y'all I'm going to be boring. Write this one down, though. This is one of my favorite words. Are you ready? I'm going to talk about that preacher again. That South Georgia Church of God preacher who is a rotund. All right. Let's, let's say fat. Yeah, let's say fat. We're going to be politically correct tonight for everybody watching online. Fat. Okay. So fat. Now y'all come over here with me and say lack. Everybody say lack. All right. Fat and lack. You will never forget this uh, Greek word so long as you live. This Greek word for lack uh, is lipo. You'll never forget it so long as you live. You'll never forget when you get to that lipo. That's the word. Anybody ever had? Don't raise your hand. Anybody had that vacuum cleaner sucked up to you? All right. You can either get sick and lose weight that way, which will work too, or you can have the lipo done and uh, that'll work. It, it, it's, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I've been gone this weekend. I've been around Pastor Judy and Pastor Jamie. So embarrassed. For those of you who don't know, preacher's secret. 
uh, TMI, uh, every time I get up to preach, probably about five or six times before I walk up here, I'm doing that number right there. Greatest fear in the world to stand up here with your zipper down. Did Pastor Jamie care? Nope. He told the whole church. He could have turned. We'd have never known. He don't care. I'm around people who don't care. So it's rubbed off. Lipo. Y'all ready for lipo? Get the fat out. He says, if any of you have lipo, and that word means shortage or undersupply. In other words, it's not to say you don't have wisdom. Um, just like uh, you might have gas in your car. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have enough gas to get from here to Vadasta. You might need to put some more gas in your car. Anybody don't need gas tonight? Uh, raise your hand. Junior is going to get you gas. Everybody here, just meet Junior after service. He'll take you to Circle K down here and fill you up with gas. <laughs> Ain't that right, Junior? Circle K. Meet him at Circle K tonight. You might have gas in your car. But that's not to say that you have enough to get where you're going. That's what this word means. So it's not to say we're a bunch of dummies. Again, do we know who we have living on the inside of us? Oh, my Lord, the one who made the heavens and the earth stands in my bedroom at night. Speaking to me spirit to spirit. When I'm unconscious, he's speaking to my spirit. Dreams and visions. In the last days, your sons and daughters will prophesy. You'll have dreams and visions. The mighty God of Israel, who knew the end from the beginning. He knows about the Antichrist. He knows about the beast. He knows everything that's going to happen in my life. He lives and is resident in me. Y'all, I... I I don't understand how the scripture works, but in 1 John it says, You have an unction from the Holy One and know all things. Explain that to me after service. You know all things. In other words, everything you need to know. God says, I'll make sure you know it. But there might be positions and situations where, Lord, do I take this job? Lord, do I marry this person? God, what do I do? My family, they're going crazy. And I have some kid who's not living right. And my money, oh Jesus, what do we do? There might be a situation where the wisdom that you need isn't in the tank. So you might lipo. If you had some life, somebody sucked the wisdom out of you. And you said, I don't know what to do right now. But he says, you you may be a little short on wisdom. If that's the case, uh, then here's what we're going to do. If any lack of wisdom side note before we move on this is interesting too the word wisdom there is sophia who happens to be the greek goddess of wisdom i don't know why james chose to use this word james is writing again to jewish christians he's not writing to the greeks even though it's written in greek i think that's real interesting he picked sophia uh, very limited information i have about sophia uh, a female goddess of wisdom um, stories about her that I thought this was interesting. Stories about Sophia. She was supposed to have created the earth. Um, in all of her wisdom, she created a son. The son had the face of a lion, but the body of a snake. And that serpent son of hers messed up the earth. But in her wisdom, she was going to... Y'all remember in the Garden of Eden? The tree of the... Knowledge of good and evil. In other words, wisdom, man's wisdom, Satan's quote unquote wisdom. We've got people right now who are so smart. These are the intellectuals. These are people who are leading our universities. Professors teaching our children, helping them get their master's degrees and doctorate's degrees who cannot look at you and tell you what a male is, what a female is. They're so smart. The intellectual, the geniuses that we are, looks around the world and goes, there is no God. And what's the Bible say? The Bible says only a fool would say there is no God. You can't help but look around and see in his fingerprint. Anybody, uh, William, where y'all go to the beach? Panama? What do y'all use? If Brother William was walking on the beach and he saw a sandcastle there. Uh, that morning he's out walking. He gets up at the crack of dawn, cooks everybody breakfast, lunch and dinner before he's ready to haul out of the house. You see him. He's out there walking. He sees that sandcastle. William does not look and say, wow, that's just amazing that the ocean waves have been coming in millions of years and built that sandcastle. That's just amazing. You would look at Brother William and go, ha, 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 ha. 
Why? Look at the little handprints, Brother William. Look at the design, Brother William. You can tell, Brother William, somebody made that. The world's wisdom, so smart. It happened to be a big bang. It happened to be the evil. Y'all, there is a wisdom that will lead us straight to hell. And that's what the wisdom of this world is trying to do right now. Sophia, the Greek goddess, is going to talk us the wrong, the wrong direction. But when we have wisdom that comes from above, when it's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, it may not make any sense. I'm going to tell you right now, we look like a bunch of fools standing up behind a pulpit yelling and spitting at people about a man dying on a cross and three days later get it looks foolish. It looks stupid having somebody lay on the ground and speak in another language or to touch them and believe that that touch is going to tear a tumor out of their body and heal them from a disease. That looks foolish. But that wisdom, that wisdom right there is the wisdom that will take us to streets of glory and we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to do it. We can experience that wisdom right here now there's a different God that goddess has been dethroned and the true and living God where all wisdom real wisdom comes from he's the one that we go to anybody likes wisdom this word wisdom here special insight special revelation again we use the example I need I need wisdom about this decision with my job I need wisdom for this if you like in that particular area then James tells us to do something what is what's he say Any of you like wisdom? What was that? Ask. Ask. I think it was, uh, it might have been Rick Renner who who said that this word ask, typically when you see it in the scripture, it's a word that means with full expectation. Asking with full expectation. If you ask somebody that you don't know for something, you may not know whether they're going to do it for you or not. But if you ask your best friend, if you ask your daddy, if you ask your mom, if you ask your sister, someone that you know, then you can ask with full expectation. Matthew 21, verse 22, Miss KK, just real quick. Y'all hold your place in James. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Anybody is eligible to believe. And if you're in the room tonight and you say, I just don't have faith for that. Let me just pause and say, you do have faith. Just like you do have wisdom. You might have faith the size, a little itty bitty faith, just the size of a grain of a little mustard seed. Everybody in this room has faith. Don't ever say, I don't have faith. I just ain't got the faith. Now, Jesus says, I've given everyone the measure of faith. Everybody has faith. Everybody. You do have faith. And if you just have a little itty bitty amount of faith, thank God you can move mountains. But what we want to do is see that faith grow. And when we pray, we're going to ask, Lord, I'm asking right now for wisdom and we're going to get to it and anything else we need. We've got to do this the same way for anything else we need. I'm asking with full expectation that you're going to give it. Let's keep trucking. Back to James. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. Now, King James says, of God. And in this case, probably the best translation. If we were to say today, I would say if I need anything, I'm going to ask mama for it. I'm going to ask to get it from God. I'm going to ask it. The word here of is the word para. P-A-R-A. P-A-R-A. And it means to come close to. To get beside of. We've said, I think we've said this before. A parachute. If the plane is crashing. I don't want Mark to have the parachute. I want to have the parachute. I love him. But. I'm sorry, I got kids. <laughs> I realized that as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, he's about to checkmate. <laughs> Touche, brother. You got me. And grandbabies. Uh, so uh, I want it next to me. The a parasite. I don't want to be. Well, I do. I want to be a leech. Here's the clue. James, the brother of Jesus, says, if we're going to get anything from God, the key to this thing, is to ask it of God. The key here is for us to say, I want to be right up next to Him. I want to be right beside Him. I want Him to be a part of my life. Here's the key to receiving from God. How is that the key to receiving from God? Because in God, in it, come on y'all, there's so many things I need. I need this, I need this, 
I need this. I need this and I need this. Now, I can get up in the morning and start praying and trying to go after all of these five half dozen things that I need. Or I can get up in the morning and I can go after one thing. Because if I have him, come on, in him, I move and live and breathe and have my being. In him is wisdom. He is the source of wisdom. In him is healing. In him, healing for my joints, healing in my eyes, healing in my... In him, all of my provision. This is why Matthew 6.33, we preach it here all the time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these... My job in the morning gets so simple. I don't need to just go on a tirade for the next three weeks trying to get a hold of wisdom. I can wake up in the morning and go, I have one assignment. And one assignment only, assignment only, to get a hold of God. This morning, I don't need to worry about paying my bills, getting my healing, uh, providing for my family. This, uh, th- there's so many things to worry about. This morning, I wake up and my life just got simplified overnight. I get up today and I have one thing. This one thing have I desired. That I might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One thing. If I can just go after the one thing. Martha has chosen the one thing. If I can get up next to him. Come on, the good shepherd. I'm going to be able to hear him whisper and say, Josh, this is what you're supposed to do. This is where you're supposed to go. I'm seeking after him. James said, here's the key right here. You need wisdom. You need anything. You need anything he says para ask of God try to get a hold of God don't be distant from him don't be separated from him draw close to God and he says I'll draw close to you and they're wrapped up and tied up in Jesus in that present in that present is everything we ever hoped for ever needed para he says get side by side get close to God and there's our trick tonight which I'm going to try to close with is if I can, how we receive God. And I'm, I'm saying the word receive, not get. Let me start with that too. I should have said that at the beginning. I'm not talking about what we can get from God. That mindset, that's kind of hard on us sometimes. And I think we have that mindset when we pray, I'm, I've got to earn it. I'm going to have to strive for it and I've got to get it. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get that check. I'm going to get mine. That's mine. And there's some added effort to this thing where it seems like, all right, I've got to get up in the morning and go get what God has for me versus that Christmas present. Those kids on Christmas morning can guarantee you whatever they get, they're not getting it because they've done anything to deserve it. As a matter of fact, them little hellions probably should get a lump of coal in their stockings. Probably what they should get. They should get popcorn off the seat in the hall out here. You know, that's what they should get. That's what they should get. They don't look at me or you or your husband or wife and go, oh, thank you so much. What do I owe you for that? You've missed the entire point. Well, I, I can't afford it, Daddy. I know you can't afford it. You're not here to get a present from me. You're here to receive it from me. You're just the receiver. God's the quarterback. You're just here to just stand in his presence. He says, I want you to have it worse than you want to have it. I want you to have wisdom. I don't want my kids walking around ignorant. We're going to receive. But the key is how we receive God is ultimately going to be the thing that challenges me and helps me to receive the gifts of God. How do I receive him? Look at a couple more scriptures real fast. John 1, verse 10 through 13. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He come, came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believeth on his name. One more. Flip over just a couple of chapters to John 5. He's talking to these Pharisees and Sadducees who are so smart. and They're memorizing the Bible and all this stuff. And he says, you search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. He says, there I am in the scripture. Eternal life is right there. It's me. Wisdom, it's me. In the Word, you'll find what you have need of. It's me. I don't agree with everything, but I think it was Calvin. 
uh, John Galvin, who said, you need to receive uh, the word. In, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You need to receive the word in the same way you receive God, because it was from God in which it originated, in which it came from, which it flowed from. So uh, how do I receive God? How do I receive him in his word through worship and prayer? The stories of people like Zacchaeus in the Bible. This little short man, I want to be politically incorrect again. I'm just in the mood now. My zippers zipped up. I'm a little midget, a little short people. This little short man climbs up in the tree looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus. But Jesus looks for him. Jesus looks up and says, Zacchaeus, come on down here. I'm coming to your house and you're going to cook me supper. That's so presumptuous. How dare he? Zacchaeus could have said, I'm going to sit right up here in this tree. I ain't cooking you nothing. But Zacchaeus received him. What about the woman with the tears who got down? Jesus came into the house. Let me break the alabaster box. Let me anoint his feet. Let me wash his feet with tears and with my hair. With my hair. Not a wash rag. Not a towel. With my hair. I'm going to. And they look at him and say, oh, my goodness. How could you let them do that? That's just so horrible. And Jesus says, I came into your house. You didn't receive me like this. You didn't give me a cup of water. You didn't give me a towel for my feet. You did nothing. The way I receive him is going to eventually impact how I receive my healing, how I receive my wisdom, how I receive my deliverance, how I receive breakthrough. If I can get to that place where I'm going to embrace Jesus. We say it all the time. I want the gift giver more than I want the gift. Little Sam, drug him with me up there. He sat through those classes with me. He did so good. Thursday, Friday, he's sitting in there and he's taking notes. He's sitting in class with me. And uh, I mean, I was so proud of him. He didn't move. He didn't talk. He'd go play in the gym when we were on breaks and long story. We had a good time. Saturday, we got to Cleveland, took him to the arcade up there and we played games. We played jail ball one day and we went to the public library because that's free. Went to the public library and hung out there and did this. Took him to Lee University, let him run and play on their soccer field. And uh, it took him to North Cliff. We had a good time. He comes back and this little joker made me so mad. He said, mama, I had a great time. Daddy didn't say no to anything. I said, yes, I did. I promise. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I said no to a lot of stuff. Don't you remember you want that candy at Target? He said, yeah, but you said yes to so many other things. It didn't even matter. I'm like, bro, I just spoiled him in a one weekend. One weekend. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. And, and this daddy ain't got what that daddy's got. I would rather get in the car with Jesus. Who, man, he can provide for the car. And at the same time, to keep the car running, at the same time, he can give me wisdom which direction to go. He can warn me about the car wreck. He can tell me where, what to do when I get there. If I can receive him into my house, if Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, stands in your I'm going to prophesy. If God Almighty is standing in your living room, Hear the word of the Lord. Whatever you have need of is standing in that living room. Whatever you desire is standing in that living room. Every bit of wisdom stands in your house. Every bit of healing stands in your house for your children, for your finances. You will lack for no good thing because God is with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? The greater one is on the inside. Oh, if I can learn to receive Him. We struggle with stuff like receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. We, we, we have a hard time getting our healing. I just don't know. And what. Stop it. Let's go into the position of, I am going to get Jesus. I'm going to chase him down. I'm going to hunt him down. I'll push through the crowds. I'll, I'll crawl on hands and knees to reach the hem of His garment. And if I get Jesus... When I receive him, then everything I have need of, it's mine. Oh, D.L. Moody told the story of a girl. He said, I met her on a Friday. He was talking to one of his friends. He said, she was poor. Look at her on Monday. She's wearing a nice dress. She can buy anything she wants into the stores here in Chicago. What do you think happened to her? Here she's poor on Friday. On Sunday or Monday when he sees her, all of a sudden she's, she's rich and can buy anything she wants to. What happened on Saturday? (laughs) 
Somebody done put a ring on it. On Saturday, she got married to somebody in Chicago who was a multimillionaire. You can be broke on Friday, get saved on Sunday, and walk out the richest human being on the face of the planet. When we get a hold of Jesus... So I just want to implore our church. I know there's a lot of things you have need of sitting here. This one, our church does. We do. Our country does. Your family does. You could probably come up with your laundry list in the morning and say, here's prayer request one. Here's prayer request 25. But why don't we just pause and go, oh, but right now I've come to seek your face. I've come to require of the Lord. I want you, Jesus. And when we get a hold of Jesus, we have everything we need. Now, James closes by telling us that God is going to give to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He's going to give. When we ask, he's going to give. One writer, I can't remember what commentary it was now, but one writer had said something about this word give here is not a one-time event. We're not supposed to think of this as just something that happens on occasion. We see in this give the nature and the character of who our God is. Uh, go to India, go to some of these other countries where they serve other idols and serve other gods. And you'll find out those gods are taking gods. They want to take, 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 take. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, for God so loved the world. Y'all help me finish it. That it gave. This isn't something unusual or strange that he just does on certain occasions. This is who he is. When we hear this, he'll giveth. And how does he give? First of all, he gives to all men. Y'all look at verse 5. I'm done. He gives to all men. All men. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. That means me. He's not holding it back from anybody. The way he does it is liberally. Not just enough. With open hand. With open hand. You guys do the word study when you get a chance. With an open hand. This is who our Jesus is. I wish you could see his hand. I wish I could see his hand. He gives it with an open hand. Liberally. He's not trying to just give us enough. Liberally. And he upbraideth not. What some of the other translations say? I didn't look this up today. Other translations of upbraideth not. Reproach. Without criticism. Anybody else? Is that it? Without rebuke or blame. blame. That's exactly what it is. Without finding fault. So the God that we serve, I know we hate to feel stingy and greedy. And we don't want that to be in our heart. But the God that we serve, we can never knock on his door too much. There was a judge in the New Testament Jesus talked about who got mad and got frustrated because somebody was asking him for something over and over again. Our God doesn't, he doesn't get worn out. He doesn't lose his temper with us. He's not impatient with us. As a matter of fact, he says, ask and keep on asking. Keep knock and keep on knocking. I think he, I think he gets joy every time we get up and say, Lord, it's me again. I'm here. It's me again, Margaret. I'm here one more time, Jesus, to ask you, oh God, give me this day my daily bread. He teaches us to pray that way. Lord, I just thank you. Today I'm going to thank you. And you know what, God? Tomorrow I'm going to be back. Same time, same channel. I'm going to be asking you again. And tonight before I go to bed, I don't think God bought, he, he upbraided, he doesn't correct or rebuke you. He doesn't scorn you for asking. He doesn't berate, censure, scorn. He, he comes alongside you to give you the w- wisdom and whatever else you need. This is how we receive everything else. Last but not least, when we get it, y'all hold on to it. That's all. When you get what you've asked for, hold on to it. When the manifestation shows up, when the glory, when you finish praying, you say amen, hold on to it. Be like Jacob in the Old Testament who says, I'm going to wrestle with God and I ain't going to let go. Y'all turn one more. I didn't give y'all this scripture. Y'all look with me real quick. We're going to close. One more scripture. Acts 11. Acts 11. Barnabas has gone preaching to folks. They're getting saved. Let's go to verse 21.
when you're in prayer, even, you know what, even if you haven't seen the manifestation, I said that wrong. Even if you haven't seen the manifestation yet, you go to the Lord in prayer asking for wisdom, asking for a prodigal to come home, uh, asking for your healing, whatever it is. When you say amen, when I say amen, even if I haven't, I don't feel any different. I don't see any different. Nothing is in the natural changed. Say amen and hold on to it. Believe you received it when you ask. This is why he says in preaching these people who have just given their hearts to the Lord. Acts eleven twenty one. It says, and the hand of the Lord was with them. A great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things come into the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all. That was with purpose of heart. If you write in your Bible, underline this right here. They would cleave unto the Lord. They would cleave unto the Lord. We get a hold of Jesus on a Wednesday night, Sunday night, Thursday afternoon. When we get a hold of him, cleave to him. Like that parachute in that airplane is going down. I'm not going to let go of my promise. I'm not going to let go of Jesus. I will not stop praying. That, that's where I probably lose, uh, lose out the most. That first time I pray, I do real good. First time I'm believing. Man, I'm strong and it's anointed and you can feel the power of God. Week two or three, you still haven't seen anything change. Now in that moment, it's real easy to say. It ain't working. No. Cleave to it. I've asked today. Write it down in your Bible. Write it down somewhere where you have to look at it every time the devil comes back and says, you didn't get it. Write it down. Nope. I received XYZ at approximately 8 p.m. January the 23rd, 2024. During worship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I received. When you go to the Lord in prayer tonight, asking for wisdom, asking for a breakthrough in your finances, Lord, Christmas is coming. We got bills. We got kids. Oh, Jesus. You cleave to the promise that he gives and he upbraideth not. And do not let go of it until you see the manifestation. Do not quit believing until the answer comes. Lord, I just don't ever say, once you ask for wisdom, when I ask for wisdom, Lord, I ask for wisdom. I I need direction. I need guidance. When I say amen, I've got to retrain myself to not walk away from that prayer time and go, I still don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. Nope. I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. I'm cleaving to the promise. I'm cleaving to the answer. It is mine because you're a generous God. Not because of what I've done to earn it, but because of your nature. You're just a good God. You want that candy? Here, boy. Come on. Just don't tell your mom. You'll be just fine. He's just so good to us. He ain't going to give us anything that hurts us. He ain't going to give us anything that's going to cause damage to us that we can't handle. He's a good God. Oh, but he's a generous God. He's a faithful God. Y'all believe that tonight? I know it's easy to talk about that in the Bible study. He's a faithful God. That's right. We all agree with that here. Stop for a second. Let's just stop. We're, we're not talking about at our church a, a story that's been made up like the Greek goddess Sophia. Sophia was made up. I mean, just sheer fiction. This ain't no story to us. It's not, no, it's not a story, period. Jesus hmm, is as real as the person sitting next to you, and I dare say more real. So when we say things like Jesus is generous, y'all just that ain't just that's not just talk from a preacher standing up here trying to hype anybody up. It is Jesus will feed five thousand. Jesus, William, I know you'd love this job. Jesus will pay our taxes. Going out and fishing. Anybody in the house just say, Lord, I'd love to be a professional fisherman. He just made that money right now. Hey, I'm on another job tonight, Brother William. Anybody? He, he is generous. He is a giver. That's not, this is not talk. 
This just isn't talk. This isn't preaching some sermon. Uh, a preacher's trying to get me uh, built up and feel good about myself when I leave. Jesus would lay down his life for us and die for us. If he would do that, why in the world would we ever go to bed at night doubting? I don't know how God is ever going to, if God's going to help us with this work situation. I just don't know what he's going to do. Y'all, if he would die, if he would be beaten for us, willingly, willingly, what are you worried about tonight? That he's going to look at you and say, sorry, I ain't going to help you with that. You're on your own now. What are you going through? Well, I know I'm facing some stuff and going through some friends. When, when the preacher says, forget me, you hear God say, ask, believe, receive. That's not made up. This is not hype. This is not a locker room speech to get you excited and go out and have a good week this week. The reality of who our God is. Jehovah, His name. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who, that's who He is. He will give us whatever we have need of.